This is Robert Kraft, and I'm your host on SNN Network. And joining me right now is Jim Mish. He is the CEO of 22nd Century Group, Inc. It's a publicly traded company. The symbol is XXII on NASDAQ. And you can actually see Jim give an investor presentation at our upcoming virtual event, the SNN Network Summer Virtual Event, happening August 17th through 19th. To register and see his presentation, please go to conference.snn.network. With that, Jim, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you doing? My pleasure, Robert. Thank you. I'm doing well and uh, you know, appreciate the, uh, the connection here and the opportunity to, to chat about uh, 22nd century. Absolutely. Me too. So this is our first time doing an interview together. And I've actually, I mean, I've seen the company present at many conferences, you know, in my few years doing this now. Uh, so I'd love to get a, a quick overview and history of the company and then we'll go from there. Yeah, the uh, look the, the history of the company has its roots, uh, from my personal opinion, in the plant biotechnology uh, arena. And uh, over the years, the the original concept, the, the foundational stone for the company, was uh, really about harm reduction uh, caused by smoking. And the you know the genius at the time was to uh, to engineer a, uh, a tobacco plant that would express you know, very low levels of nicotine, non-addictive levels of nicotine, and to drive that into the marketplace, either as the biotechnology itself or as tobacco or ultimately a, you know, a brand of cigarettes that would uh, reduce, uh, reduce harm based on the uh, reduced exposure of, of nicotine. But the core of it really was driven by the, the plant biotechnology and then taking advantage of expertise in the, uh, in the cigarette uh, industry and uh, the, the uh, regulatory hurdles and uh, events that were playing out uh, with FDA and, and big tobacco, et cetera. So the foundation and roots of the business comes from a very noble mission, which is to reduce the harm caused by smoking, driven by science and a, a very uniquely engineered uh, plant technology that uh, we have very strong, uh, wide and deep IP mode around, and then uh, optionality to take it forward as a brand on our own, uh, with a primary objective uh, really to license that technology out to those who have uh, stronger and faster channels to market to get into the consumer's hands as we navigate through the FDA's regulatory barriers. That's really the, the heart and the foundation of the company. Very good. So as I said, I've seen the company present over many years. The company is, has been around for a while now. So where are we currently at right now today as, as the company exists? Yeah, so the, the company has evolved uh, dramatically, I think, over the past uh, year, you know, coming up on a year and a half, they were already uh, vectoring in the right direction. And uh, I joined at an opportune time to really uh, take advantage of, of that uh, momentum that was building and, uh, and really set our sights at a few, you know, few key objectives uh, over the past year. One was not to lose sight of our primary mission, right? And that was all about our tobacco franchise. That was all about the reduced nicotine content uh, tobacco, the first generation and multiple generations after that driving it forward. And that was to drive through uh, to uh, advance the PMTA authorization we have from the FDA already to sell the product and secure the modified risk tobacco product uh, that allows us to put our marketing claim of 95% less nicotine on the package, right? And that was, you know, first and foremost, we did not want to lose our roots, lose our way and lose that as our primary mission. So we've, we've certainly accomplished that by increasing our activity with FDA, increasing the, uh, you know, the agriculture aspect of the, the, the low nicotine beyond the first varietal and the other varietals and being prepared, becoming prepared for the uh, immediate launch of VLN uh, within 90 days of securing the, the right MRTP from the FDA. So that was objective number one. And I'm happy to say that, you know, uh, aside from the specific time from the FDA uh, for the authorization, we have secured, you know, every, every other box and are eagerly awaiting that MRTP and fully prepared to launch the brand as, you know, as expected. Um, but then we started to recognize that uh, we have offshore opportunities. We've announced uh, that we're moving offshore as, uh, you know, as we move into the second half of this year and into the first quarter of uh, next year uh, with the VLM launches where we can without the MRTP. So tobacco, a very good spot and moving, uh, moving forward. 
we also recognize that tobacco doesn't end with low nicotine, right? Uh, the tobacco plant itself is very rich uh, for things such as proteins for vaccine uh, manufacturing and carriers. We can do a lot more with tobacco and we don't wanna get distracted from the primary mission, but we've expanded the biotechnology platform even around the, the first franchise tobacco itself. But then 22nd century had made investments in hemp cannabis and the, the original investments were a bit more weighted towards finished goods. I come out of the ingredient side of the fence and the solutions uh, side of the business. And I saw it more of a biotechnology uh, stronghold uh, if we could start to bolt on some partnerships and capabilities and really focus more as an ingredient solutions provider more so than a finished goods provider. So that's why we converted our agreement with Panacea to focus more on that, it became a win-win. We started bolting on uh, very unique partners who give us the forefront knowledge of uh, uh, cannabinoids and how they impact humans in a very complex endocannabinoid system. That's the Canometrics investment. Uh, we bolted on and expanded our position with KeyGene on the genetics, which is really at the heart of our hemp cannabis uh, and third franchise uh, uh, promotional and drive. And then brought on, you know, now four expert global alkaloid plant breeders a plant that's very challenging to, uh, to breed. You need that type of expertise. Uh, and then also purification uh, capabilities, extraction, et cetera. So we've now built and are operating this engine to drive this second uh, franchise. And as we've been public with, we expect our initial uh, revenue stream from that coming in uh, late third quarter, probably more so uh, fourth quarter of uh, this year. And then finally, uh, you know, we had identified early on a third franchise, a very adjacent uh, to the, uh, the plant science. We could leverage uh, our entire infrastructure uh, in, uh, that we had built in hemp uh, cannabis into this uh, plant franchise. Uh, at the same time, it has very much lower barriers for regulatory approvals, uh, large growing market globally, and uh, much faster routes to commercialization. So the whole synergistic element of that third franchise, we moved on. So we secured IP, we began driving this, the operational partnerships faster, commercial partnerships faster. And that's what we'll be announcing uh, on August 30th. Very good. So, you know, what's your background? I mean, how, how'd you come into all this? Yeah, I, uh, I have a, a pretty wide uh, variety of, of experience. So I. My background is technical. So I go back into the R&D stages and uh, you know, chemical chemistry background. Uh, and started my career in ivory tower research and development with uh, Pfizer uh, Pharmaceutical. And then went through a series of uh, large corporate, large private, uh, private equity uh, deals throughout the years, uh, then continue to work my way up. Uh, and to get well-rounded. And it was mostly around, uh, I'd say high value specialty ingredients and, and pharmaceutical APIs uh, that were high margin, high value. And tried to always package that, not just as an ingredient supplier, but to differ differentiate the, the company that I work for so that we could offer more of a solutions approach, formulation assistance, uh, and uh, be more than just an ingredient supplier to drive up the value chain. Uh, so, uh, so I've had a, a great run of, of looking into and servicing a number of these end use markets that we're now targeting anywhere from the recreational and medical OTC space in cannabis uh, to the food, beverage, nutritional supplement area uh, in, uh, in really all of the franchises and the cons basic consumer products as well. So I bring that to the table and, and thankfully we've got a tremendous amount of uh, tobacco experienced individuals within the organization and on the board that I've learned from uh, to drive the, the tobacco uh, franchise forward. Very good. Well, Jim, before I let you go today, from what you can tell us, what would you say, and you've, you've alluded to this a little bit already earlier, but from what you can tell us, what would you say are some of the company's value catalysts now for the rest of 2021 going into 2022? Yeah, I, I would say, again, at our, at our core, we're playing off of the strength of our plant-based biotechnology and our speed to market to bring disruptive technology to a variety of end-use markets. 
cutting across, as I said, pharmaceuticals, CPG, food, beverage, nutrition, et cetera. So we got a very wide field to work with, all of which are high margin. Catalytically, we've got multiple catalysts uh, that we're moving off of. Certainly on the tobacco side, the VLN brand, the launch of it offshore over the next uh, few quarters, you know, what we've said is by the first quarter of 2022, we'll be in market in multiple offshore countries. So that's certainly catalytic. That could very well come in parallel with an MRTP authorization and a parallel launch in the, uh, in the US. Certainly that would be uh, exponentially catalytic as, as well. Uh, and then bear in mind, there's a lot of regulatory things developing on uh, menthol mandates and nicotine mandates that uh, drive that into the stratosphere as far as, uh, as far as opportunity is concerned, just on that catalyst itself. Uh, but then you find that with hemp cannabis, uh, we're expecting initial revenue streams from our upfront licensing of our uh, legacy IP in here in Q4. We're growing now, uh, very unique strains of uh, high CBG, high CBD, very low THC strains on our Colorado farm as we speak. Uh, we'll be uh, seeing the initial revenue streams catalytically from that in Q4 into Q1. And, uh, and then on the third franchise that we'll announce, I would say that's more of a 2022 uh, revenue generation, you know, about 12 to 18 months after we, after we launch it. Uh, but we may very well see some uh, catalytic upfront licensing opportunities there as well as we get into next year. So multiple catalysts, global expansion coming uh, and um, really exciting things to, uh, to drive the business forward. Very good. Well, Jim, where can our audience go and find more information on 22nd Century Group? You know, basically go visit our website, which we're refreshing uh, as we speak uh, and uh, as we expand the business, but it's xxiicentury.com and uh, check us out on, uh, on our new uh, exchange with NASDAQ. We had an exciting day yesterday, uh, with, which was our first day of trading and uh, we closed, uh, closed the market uh, yesterday afternoon. So uh, by all means, visit us at, uh, at both locations. Very good. Jim, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Good luck. Stay safe. And I look forward to our next update. Thank you very much, Robert. Appreciate the time and uh, look forward to uh, updating you down the road. Thank you, Jim.